Hello everyone. I'm back with another chapter of Geography, Class 6, NCRT. Chapter 5, Major Domains of the Earth. In this chapter, we will speak about the three main components of the environment. They are the lithosphere, atmosphere and hydrosphere. So what is lithosphere? The solid portion of the Earth on which we live is called the lithosphere. In simple terms, lithosphere is nothing but the rocky bed that lies beneath your foot. Similarly, the gaseous layer that surrounds the earth is called atmosphere, where oxygen, nitrogen, carbon dioxide and other gases are found. Last, hydrosphere. By the name you can figure out, it's related to water. The hydrosphere comprises all forms of water, that is ice, water and water vapor. Now combining all of the three forms, something called biosphere. The biosphere is nothing but the combination of land, water and air which contains all forms of life. So with this sentence all forms of life we mean all the living organisms that are there on planet earth. Now, now let's read about lithosphere. As we read the solid portion of the earth is called lithosphere and it is also nothing but the earth's crust. So if you see earth is divided into uh, three layers. The middle, the the innermost middle layer is called the core where you will find lava and above that you have the mantle and then you have the crust. So lithosphere is nothing but the crust. So when it comes to earth's surface it is divided into two major land masses that is the continent and then the ocean basin. Remember ocean basin is also a land mass because if you see places like Antarctica and places near arctic circle everything is of icy state so if everything is of ice it will be uh, solid rock solid right on that you will find living organisms like penguin and other sea creatures surviving on it coming to the second page we can see a good large world view in the map so as you can see all the water all the oceans are connected interconnected so we roughly have uh, five oceans and that is Pacific, Atlantic, Arctic, Indian and Southern Ocean. So remember this. Coming to page 3, the highest mountain peak is Mount Everest which is 8848 meters above the sea level and the depth that is the altitude that is going in minus that is going down is recorded as 11,022 meters at Mariana Trench in Pacific Ocean. So the depth of Pacific Ocean is 11,022. Just, just think about it. It is much higher than the height of Everest. Now let's read about continents. So we have seven continents and they are Asia, Europe, Africa, North America, South America, Australia and Antarctica. Let's go through each one of them briefly. Asia is the largest continent. Tropic of Cancer passes through the continent. Remember that Tropic of Cancer also passes through India and India is in Asia. So remember that. And Asia is separated from Europe by Ural Mountains. So if we go back to the map in the second page, this is the Asia in yellow part and then you have the purple color called Europe and between them there's a strip, red strip called Ural Mountain. If you are having trouble in remembering this Ural mountain, just remember the spelling of it and it starts with U and U is also found in Europe. So therefore the mountain that divides Asia and Europe is Ural mountain. Coming to Europe, Europe is much smaller and part of Arctic circle also passes through it and it is also bound by water bodies on three sides. So if we look at the map again, so Europe is surrounded by water bodies three sides. That is the Arctic Ocean on top and you have the Atlantic Ocean towards the left side and then you have the Sea Mediterranean Sea and behind it it is the full part of Asia so 1, 2 and 3. Coming to Africa, Africa is the second largest continent. Yeah, look at the size of this continent, this green color continent. It is, it is the second large after Asia. So one thing that we need to remember is it is also the only continent through which Tropic of Cancer, Equator and Tropic of Capricorn pass. There you see these three lines. These are passing through Africa and no other continent will have all the three coming in straight. And this continent also has the Sahara Desert which is the world's largest hot desert. And it also hosts 
the world's longest river Nile. Now let's go to North America. It is the third largest continent of the world and it has a small linkage between South America. So this place where the linkage happens is called Isthmus. And if you see the map, again North America is also surrounded by three oceans. That is the Pacific, Atlantic and Arctic. Coming to page 4, South America. So it lies in the Southern Hemisphere, which where two oceans surround it on the East and West. And another point of fact is, the longest chain of mountains is over there, which is called the Andes. So again, if you go back to the map and you see the South American continent, there you see this huge long chain of mountains that is there in their western shoreline. So this is nothing but the Andes mountain. This is the longest chain of mountain anywhere. And South America also has the world's largest river. Remember, it's the world's largest river, not the longest river. Largest river is Amazon and longest river is Nile. Now coming to Australia, it is the smallest continent that lies entirely in Southern Hemisphere. Now have a look at Australia, that is pink in color. It is the smallest continent by water everywhere, okay? So this is also called the island continent. The only island continent is Australia. And the last continent, Antarctica, which is completely in the Southern Hemisphere. And it is a huge continent. It's all ice rock. In fact, South Pole lies almost at the center of it and nobody stays there permanently. People just go there for research purposes. Scientists go there to, to conduct some kind of research and again they come back. And hence, many countries have their research stations over there. So the two famous research stations of India that is there in Antarctica and they are Maitri and Dakshin Gangotri. Remember this, Dakshin Gangotri and Maitri. So coming to the next topic, hydrosphere. The Earth is called the blue pan planet. More than 71% of the Earth is covered with water and 29% is with land. So just remember this ratio, 71 is to 29. As we have read in the first page, hydrosphere consists of water in all of its form. That is the regular water, ice and water vapor. So where all can we see water? Water is just not available in ocean, lakes and sea. It is also available underground and then we have the glaciers that melt and the atmo and the water vapor that is there in the atmosphere so these all account for the entire hydrosphere you just cannot say hydrosphere means ocean or sea or any kind of river it comprises of everything so hence now we can say more than 97 percent of the earth's water is found in the ocean so as human we cannot drink the ocean water as it is it's too salty so we hugely rely on glaciers because when they melt they produce fresh water and also underground water which is available in very small percentage page 5 so in this picture you can see the block diagram of the entire continent so it's easy to remember seven continents one two three four five six and seven so you can also see the size of it and easily figure out which is small and which is the largest one. So in this page, the main topic is oceans. Oceans are the major part of hydrosphere. They are all interconnected. So if you see that block diagram, you can see all the blue color that is there behind. It is all ocean and they are somehow interconnected. You can see a nice puzzle sort of a thing and you can make your way inside the land masses and connect all the water together. So roughly, let's just read about ocean. What does it mean? The three chief movements of ocean waters are waves, tides and ocean currents. So waves are nothing but those small movement of water and tides are the bigger version of waves. Tides can go up to 7 meters, 10 meters and more than that. And waves are nothing but the smaller version of distributed water flow. And then we have the huge part that is called the ocean current. It is much bigger than waves and tides. Ocean currents are also the reason behind tornadoes and heavy storm, thunderstorm. So as we have read, so as we have read, there are five major oceans, which is the Pacific Ocean, Atlantic, Indian, Southern Ocean and Arctic Ocean. And we have also read the Pacific Ocean is the largest ocean. And few facts if you're interested, these are it is one third of the earth. Pacific Ocean is one third of the earth. Mariana Trench is the deepest part of the earth. 
lies in the Pacific Ocean. The Pacific Ocean is almost circular in shape, etc. etc. Coming to the Atlantic Ocean, it is the second largest ocean in the world. It is S shaped and it is also uh, one of the major source of commerce, trade, com trade and commerce. Most of the ships pass through Atlantic Ocean in order to do trades with the European nations and other African continents and moving on to Asia, America and South America. The Indian Ocean is only the ocean named after a country, that is India. Rest other uh, oceans are independent and the Southern Ocean encircles the continent Antarctica completely. It surrounds that continent and again the Arctic Circle is located within the Arctic Circle and surrounds the North Pole. It is also connected with Pacific Ocean by a narrow stretch of shallow water. So this term Bering Strait. So Bering Strait is Bering Strait is also of huge importance because that is the final point the day ends and day starts. So if you see this small portion over here, the Bering Strait lies over there. Yes. So if it is, um, yeah, if it is night, sorry, if it is uh, one o'clock at uh, North America, there it will be one o'clock in the morning. So coming to the next topic, atmosphere. The earth, the earth is surrounded by a layer of gas called the atmosphere. And if you see this picture on the right side, you can see the uh, different layers of atmosphere. First comes troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, thermosphere and exosphere. So you can easily remember this by TSMTE or anything. You can use some kind of mnemonics. So always remember this troposphere is the uh, inside um, layer of atmosphere within the earth circular path. So it is also the uh, layer at which the a plane, a plane um, flies. So it is well within reach. And then comes the stratosphere where you can see the comets and then mesosphere where, where rockets are launched and thermosphere where the satellites are launched. So this is like, this is how you can remember the layers of the atmosphere. Okay. So what is the importance of atmosphere? It's a thin blanket of air that surrounds the earth's surface and it provides us with air we breathe and protects us from the harmful effects of sun rays. We cannot directly consume uh, the sun rays because it contains a lot of harmful uh, rays such as UV rays etc which can burn our skin which can give us skin disease etc. So there's a thin layer of gas that surrounds the earth and it acts like a blanket. So that, that, that is what is atmosphere. So the atmosphere extends up to height of 1600 kilometer. Remember this 1600 kilometer is the height of atmosphere. Then atmosphere is divided into five layer based on composition, temperature and other properties. So we just read about the layers of atmosphere, remember? So these layers are nothing but these stroposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, thermosphere and exosphere. And the two important uh, gases that are there in atmosphere are nitrogen and oxygen. Remember this. And they together make up to 98% of the clean dry air. Nitrogen is 78% and oxygen is 21%. And other gases like carbon dioxide, argon and other comprises 1% by volume. Because if they are more then we wouldn't be able to breathe. So carbon dioxide is very minute, you know that. Because uh, most of the trees, they give, out, uh, they give out oxygen and they take in carbon dioxide during daytime. So quickly let's just cover the atmosphere part. The, it is a thin layer. It is a thin layer of gas which surrounds the earth for uh, not only uh, human beings, it also it is also essential for growth of plants. So it protects all the organism, not just human being. So it is very crucial for us to uh, preserve our atmosphere. Now coming to page number seven, the density of atmosphere varies with height, which is true. The density, the density of atmosphere varies with height. It gets maximum at the sea level and decreases rapidly. Remember, going down increases, going up decreases. And the temperature also increases as we go up. That's why a lot of the mountaineer where they, when they go on a uh, trekking or any kind of summit, so they have to carry oxygen cylinder so that they can breathe. So always remember the movement of air is always high pressure to low pressure. Wherever there is high pressure, the winds move away from there. So high pressure is seen 
at oceans at ocean bed and hence it gets passed to a low pressure area low pressure is nothing but the land mass and that is why we see a lot of storm coming towards the uh, land area if if there is a storm which is building up on some ocean immediately it will be passed to the nearest land mass or, or continent and that is how we see the change of weather and it's raining or thunderstorm etc coming to the last topic biosphere the biosphere is the narrow zone of contact between the land water and air so this is very important the combination where land water and air comes together is called biosphere it is this zone that life that is unique to this planet exists so have a look at this picture you will E easily understand the meaning of uh, biosphere if you can see every single thing that is there in this picture you will not need any kind of a textual definition you can easily understand what is biosphere it has this uh, sky over there and then it has this water and all these water organism and then it has the lithosphere the landmass and all the organism that lives on planet earth so everything together comprises of biosphere so here is a good definition of biosphere species of organism that vary in size from microbes and bacteria to huge mammals all the living organisms including humans are linked to each other and to the biosphere for survival so this sentence broadly means that everything everything that is available and that can breathe are together form biosphere so in this last line when it says the biosphere for survival it means remember darwin's theory of survival the fittest will survive that's why you see big fishes eating the smaller one and then we eating the fish so everything is a biosphere so just think of it this way plants are grown the plants are grown into a tree then the leaves and fruit they fall down and then small organisms such as caterpillar or earthworm they eat the leaves all right and decayed leaves and then uh, those small organism when they die they get flushed away with rain water to the river and when it get flushed away to the river the water organisms such as fish small fishes big fishes they eat them and then we catch those fish and we eat them so you can just imagine that how this entire circle forms a biosphere so that is the entire definition of biosphere so this chapter was all about this I hope you understood this chapter easily and uh, let's go through the exercise questions briefly. First question, what are the four major domains of the earth? So we read about this. The four major domains of earth are lithosphere, atmosphere, hydrosphere and biosphere. Name the major continents of the earth. So there are seven continents, so you can just name uh, all of them. The largest continent is Asia, followed by Africa and then North America. Name the two continents that lie entirely in the southern hemisphere so the two continent that lies completely in the southern hemisphere are antarctica and australia africa and south america have a little portion of it in northern hemisphere name the different layers of atmosphere so let's quickly remember how how we read about it the first is thermo uh, sorry i'm really sorry about that so let's quickly go through the layers of atmosphere troposphere and then stratosphere and then mesosphere and thermosphere last is exosphere so exosphere can be uh, easily remembered as exit ex because let's see that let's read it as exit you know that is the exit the last layer and it starts with tropo tropo let's read it as tropical you know a good nice greenery around so, hence it is the beginning so it is close to the planet earth let's think of it as tropic tropical tropical tropico something like that and then comes strata so strata uh, all those dots that form strata and there you can see all the shooting stars asteroid etc and then come meso so meso is nothing but heavy you know in terms of like mesosphere like meso body heavy body and heavy body such as rockets rockets go in that layer and then thermo thermo is the heat so uh, we can easily remember that so before exiting let's go through the heat one so thermosphere like that fifth question why is the earth called the blue planet 75% of it comprises of water more than 75% comprises of water and uh, uh, yeah 99% is ocean water which is salty and hence this is called blue planet why is sixth question why is the northern hemisphere called the land of hemisphere it is called the land of hemisphere because most of the uh, most of the continents lie in northern hemisphere 
that is why it is called the land of hemisphere why is the biosphere important for living organism so we read about this right so it is nothing what you can write it in your words something like everything is interconnected there is a big chain and uh, it, it follows from a small plant to a big human being or a mammal so everything is interlinked so biosphere is very important because if one thing gets affected the uh, change or the consequences can be seen in the other and you can give few examples like deforestation and how I explained about the uh, food system you know how things get decayed and eaten by one sector and how it comes to the end of the chain etc coming to some uh, take the correct answers the mount range that separates Europe from Asia is the Ural mountains as I said Europe so EU so there should be U in it Urals Second one, the continent of North America is linked to South America by an isthmus. So Panama, Panama is the place, is the name of the place that is the point between North America and South America. Um, the major constituent of atmosphere by percentage is, yeah. So uh, together nitrogen and oxygen form 99% of the uh, atmosphere. Carbon dioxide is in 1%, but nitrogen takes the lead by 73%. So 75 or 73 percent, something more than 70, just remember that. So nitrogen is the major constituent of atmosphere. The domain of the earth consisting of solid rock is called lithosphere. So solid rocks, solid rocks are found on the upper uh, layer of the earth, right? It cannot be in the uh, inside layer. So as I said, uh, this earth is covered with three layers. One is the core and then the mantle and then the crust. So crust is on which we live. So lithosphere which is the largest continent Asia the second one is Africa and the smallest is Australia it is also the island continent remember that fill in the blanks the deepest point of the earth is Mariana Trench which is 11,000 something in Pacific Ocean the dash ocean is named after a country Indian Ocean the dash is a narrow contact zone of land water and air that supports life biosphere the continent of Europe and Asia together are known as Eurasia highest mountain peak of the earth is Mount Everest and the largest range of mountains is Andes which is in South America. So with this we have come to an end of another chapter in geography. I hope you enjoyed this session. I will be back with another chapter. Till then goodbye.